So from that, I'd like to take you to, uh, to a very magical time, again in India, a magical time when the moon married the 27 daughters of King Daksha. Well, if you're the moon and you lived in those times, you could get away with polygamy, but don't try it today. <laughs> so the story goes that each day, the moon would visit one of his wives. However, his father-in-law, King Daksha, got word that the moon favors one of his wives called Rohini much more than the other wives. And he was furious with his son-in-law. How could he treat his daughters not equally? So he's furious with him. And so he curses his uh, 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 son-in-law, but then the moon uh, managed to go and plead with uh, the god uh, Mahadeva, and he got a boon from him, and as a result of which, he was condemned to a life of waxing and waning. Now, this enchanting story has encoded both complex as well as uh, uh, simple astronomical facts. Let me explain. The ancient Indians had observed that each day, the moon rises in the east at a different time and therefore against a different backdrop of the skies and stars. They also observed that it took approximately 27 days for the moon to return to the same backdrop of the sky and stars. So they decided to divide the 360 degree sphere into 27 sections. Now it's not enough to just divide it into sections. You also need to be able to recognize these sections. So what they did is they decided to, uh, uh, they looked for the brightest stars in each of these sections and they named each of those stars for one of the wives of the moons. These were the nakshatras. Nakshatras are loosely translated as the lunar mansions. So the 27 nakshatra model is exactly that. So see, this is a very, very powerful mnemonic that the ancients evolved where using the mnemonics of the moon's wife's name, they could come out and look at the night sky and recognize the principal stars in it, as well as associate them with the phases of the moon and thus mark the passage of time. This mechanism of passage of time has been used in India for an exceedingly long period of time, even to present times when you mark the occurrence of festivals using such a lunar calendar. So uh, we are no closer to addressing the story of why did the moon favor Rohini? And I'd like to come to that. The ancients had observed that in its path over the ecliptic, the ecliptic is the imaginary line from the east to the west across which celestial bodies like the moon, the sun, and the constellations go. They had noticed that when the moon goes across the ecliptic, sometimes it covers a principal star, and sometimes it just comes close but does not cover a principal star. So there is a technical name for this. It is called a lunar occultation. The ancients had observed that this occultation sometimes happens with some principal stars and not with others. And they also observed a periodicity. They observed a periodicity of 19 years, which today we call a Maton cycle. So uh, it turns out that today with our studies, we know that if a principal star is located between four degrees and six degrees from the ecliptic, then it experiences a cluster of lunar occultations over a four-year period, which repeats all over after 19 years. If the principal star is located greater than six degrees from the ecliptic, then it does not experience any occultation. I know that sounds very technical, but really speaking, these are very simple observational things that you can do. If you read a star almanac or if you read an astronomy magazine and get to know about an impending lunar occultation, all you need to do is go out to the appointed time, look at the night sky, and you can make a naked eye observation of uh, some of this phenomena. Or if you want a closer look, literally, you could use a binoculars or a telescope. Or if you're so impatient, you could use a, a planetarium software in your computer and quickly simulate this phenomena. So I did all of these things to try and understand this Indian story of why did the moon favor Nakshatra Rohini over all the other Nakshatras? Well, it turns out that Rohini is the star that in Arabic is called Aldebaran. So today we know them by the familiar name Aldebaran. Rohini is located at five degrees from the ecliptic. What does it mean? It means that Rohini is going to experience a cluster of occultations over a four year period that repeats all over after 19 years. Well, I counted in the latest cluster, the latest cluster is from 2015, ending this year in 2018, I counted 49 occultations of 
Aldebaran or Rohini with the moon. This is far greater than the number of occultations that the moon has had with any other nakshatra or principal stars. Not only had the ancients observed the phenomena of occultation, not only had they also looked at the frequency and called out how often each is occulted, they had also noticed that Rohini was occulted the most and preserved that observational wisdom in an easy to remember story of the moon and his wives and how he loved Rohini more than the others. So isn't it amazing, such a simple, uh, com complex astronomical phenomena encoded in a simple idiom that is unfortunately easily dismissed as a silly myth. So the next time that any of you hear anybody dismissing an ancient story as a myth, do ask them to pause and reflect. They could be spurning millennia of wisdom that is encoded in the story. Thank you for listening to my stories.